Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. When it comes to naval warfare, the destroyer is by far the most versatile vessel. This class of ships is known for being fast, maneuverable, and capable of traveling long distances. They are often employed to escort larger ships, like aircraft carriers, protecting them from short-range attack vessels and other threats. Though most modern destroyers carry a wide range of armaments, including surface-to-air missiles and deck-mounted cannons, one of their primary weapons is the torpedo. These are self-propelled, underwater-ranged weapons designed to travel under the water and destroy enemy ships and submarines. Designed back in the early 1900s, what generally separates torpedoes from other types of ordnance is that they can move under their own power and be steered to acquire moving targets better. Torpedo practice is a big part of how destroyer crews train for actual combat. Generally, this consists of firing and directional exercises using dummy torpedoes that don't have any explosives. Torpedoes are launched using tubes, some of which are built into the side of the ship, and some of which are placed on deck. The only negative side of running these tests is that the dummy torpedoes must be retrieved afterward. In some cases, this can mean using helicopters to remove them from the ice physically. In other cases, divers might be employed to help locate and free dummy torpedoes that have become lodged in hard-to-reach areas. Many people are often surprised at the size of these weapons. Indeed, the Mark 48 torpedo weighs a total of 3,400 pounds and is 19 feet long. And at nearly 4 million per torpedo, it's understandable why the Navy spends so much time, effort, and manpower on recovery operations. There are times when the Navy will employ live weapons against obsolete or captured vessels. These live fire exercises, known as SYNCX, are one of the most prominent training tools in existence. In this case, the USS Chicago fast attack submarine is tasked with sinking a decommissioned missile frigate. Since they travel under the water, torpedoes are the primary weapons of submarines. However, they can also launch surface-to-air missiles. They do this to defend themselves against attacks from the air or attack targets located miles away. In this exercise, the Chicago first employs a missile against the target boat, then delivers a torpedo into the ship's starboard side to finish it off. Mm -hmm. 
SYNC-X tests are one of the many ways the Navy keeps its destroyer crews mission ready. It's important to note that these exercises come at a tremendous cost. Even when the target ships are old or derelict, the weapons and ammunition used to take them down will often cost in the tens of millions of dollars or more. Fortunately, the sunken ships will go on to provide an artificial habitat for all manner of sea life. Throughout the history of modern warfare, one of the biggest problems militaries have needed to solve is how to attack targets from the air with reliable precision. For decades, bombing campaigns were played out using saturation bombing. This is where unguided bombs are dropped from great heights to destroy a given area completely. One of the most successful bombers to perform these missions is the B-52 Stratofortress, which is still in service today. However, most new weapons are GPS or laser-guided, drastically increasing accuracy and reducing collateral damage. That's why modern B-52s are being outfitted with special rotary launchers. Once assembled, they can be inserted into the aircraft's bomb bay, allowing the crew to select between multiple weapons on the fly. This allows for much more versatility during missions. Of course, the B-52 still carries a wide range of conventional bombs. The Stratofortress is, after all, one of the largest bombers ever produced. At 159 feet long, it can carry around 70,000 pounds of ordnance, ranging from bombs to mines to missiles. Still, missions that were purely the domain of bombers a few decades ago are starting to be assigned to other aircraft. For instance, the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning is quickly becoming the aircraft of choice for precision bombing missions. While it can only carry a fraction of the ordnance of the B-52, the F-35 is faster and has stealth capabilities. The Lightning has four internal stations to carry bombs and missiles as well as six external hardpoints. In total, it can carry around 18,000 pounds of ordnance to its target, all while traveling at speeds of up to Mach 1.6. All things considered, it's not surprising why the F-35 sees a lot more strike missions than its larger counterparts. No matter how advanced aircraft get, there will always be a need for boots on the ground. Indeed, modern ground troops are better armed, better prepared, and ready to take on more versatile missions than ever before. Of course, as with everything the military does, ground troops are expected to undergo rigorous training exercises to prepare them better to use the weapons at their disposal. This generally features live fire exercises using missile launchers like the Stinger. These surface-to-air weapons have been in service since the early 1980s.
Despite its size, it is a formidable weapon due to its ability to acquire a target and follow it in midair. At just 33 pounds, the Stinger is easy to carry and quick to fire. This makes it a versatile weapon for troops on the field. Those curious about the future of ground-based weaponry need look no further than the C-RAM or counter-rocket artillery and mortar device. This revolutionary defense system is an adaptation of the Phalanx CIWS and is capable of acquiring and destroying incoming rockets, mortar, and artillery rounds before they hit their targets. The C-RAM is fully automated, which means it can detect and deal with threats without any human intervention. As warfare becomes ever more technologically advanced, no doubt weapons like the C-RAM will prove vital to the protection of both military bases and civilian areas. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.